we talked about our, there's our points, and we created um, a rectangular and we have polar points. Now let's go and look at the unit circle again and understand a random point on the unit circle. So this is the unit circle. A random point on the unit circle, we called x, y, right? But we also called that cosine of theta. Mm, let me do it in red. So we called it x, y, or blue. But we also called it cosine of theta, sine of theta. Yes? Right? Because even it, like whatever theta is, you can just say the cosine of theta, sine of theta, like that gives you, like we did that during our vectors units. You guys agree? So you can, qual you can call this the x and y coordinate, like there's x, there's y, and you can give it an x and y, or we could also refer to it based on our angle, our theta, if we know the theta. Well, again, guys, we never multiplied anything by this, but if um, what we learned in vectors, like if we wanted to, like if we wanted to stretch a vector or compress it, what did we do? We just multiplied it by a, a, scalar. a scalar, right? So if I, instead of this having a magnitude of one, which it does, if I wanted this to have a magnitude of two, then I would just multiply it by two. two. So once you guys agree, like this can be rewritten as, so this point on the unit circle is cosine of theta, sine of theta. This is just two cosine of theta, sine of theta. This point is three, cosine of theta, sine of theta. This is four, cosine of theta, sine of theta. Do you guys agree? Do you guys kind of see like how that is your scalar, that four is your scalar? So therefore, and then if I ask you, well then to represent any of these points as terms of x's and y's based on theta, then we can just say, x is equal to whatever your radius is, just multiply that by cosine of theta. Or put it like this, r times cosine of theta, sine of theta. And then you can distribute that to give you r cosine of theta, r sine of theta. So x is equal to r cosine of theta, y is equal to r sine of theta. So if any time I'm given a polar point and I want to know what that is in terms of x's and y's, all I got to do is just take the cosine of the angle and multiply it by its radius, right? Because if I had a radius of 1, it'd be easy. I'd just do the cosine of the angle, the sine of the angle. But when I have different radiuses, I have to multiply it by that radius for each one, right? So again, this is a, one important thing. Think of radius as yes, or think of r as yes, your radius, the distance away from the origin, but also think of it as a scalar, and that will become important later. It is a scalar. It's getting represented as a scalar, right? So that's important for you guys to understand. Um, what about these points? How do we go from here to here? Like, what if we don't know the angle? Like, this one was easy because we knew the angle. So what if I just give you some random point? And I say, here's my point. X, Y, draw that in polar form. Well, then you'd say, well, the one thing Mr. McGlogan taught us in trigonometry class is I can create a central angle perpendicular to the X axis. And then I know this is X and this would be Y. Do I now have enough information to find my R and to find my theta? Yeah. R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, written on the board, and theta is you can write theta as tangent of theta equals y over x. So even though I didn't solve exactly or uniquely for r, or uniquely for theta, I think you guys know the math to solve for those, both those values. So if you're given rectangular points and you need to write them in polar form, find the r and then find the angle. Right? So create your triangle, right? So trig is not going away. It's not as heavy as it was before, but it didn't it'll go away.